Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Reviews. Tonight we're going to be doing a little bit of catch-up work on Thor. So we're going to talk about the last three issues of Thor, issues 19, 20, and 21. These, of course, are all written by Donny Cates with art from Nick Klein. And these three issues constitute the first three of five parts of the new story arc, God of Hammers. So normally on the channel here, we go through all of the issues, or all the comics we talk about page by page and get really down and dirty into the details since we're talking about three separate issues in this one video and I don't want it to be an hour long we're gonna go through each issue a little bit faster and focus mainly on the big story points uh, and instead of you know super detailed on that but at the end I will go through and talk about everything that I like and dislike in broad strokes about this particular story arc sound good all right guys so let's go ahead here and and talk about maybe what's been going on with Thor to just kind of level set going into uh, into God of Hammers here and talk about about what's kind of kicking all this off. So up through the first, you know, 18 issues of Thor thus far of Donny Cates's run, we've seen a lot of interesting things happening with uh, with Thor and Mjolnir, and we have seen him start to not be able to lift it. It starts to be heavy. It's not quite behaving, and then someone stole it. So that means, or the implication there is that someone else was able to lift Mjolnir, and we even saw. I think we saw that Loki himself was able to lift it as well so something is going on with the hammer or the enchantment around the hammer that it is no longer behaving as it used to and people other than Thor can lift it and Thor himself now can't lift it so some lot of interesting things going on and that leads us here into God of Hammers where I believe in the previous issue someone stole Mjolnir and now Thor is going around trying to figure out who stole it, who could have stolen it, and just figure out the general mystery, and we get a bunch of big revelations over the course of these three issues. So, let's go ahead here and let's dive into issue 19 to kick things off. And so, in Donny Cates fashion, we do kick this off with a big ol' exposition dump. And actually, I'm going to read some of this because I really do love these, these exposition dumps or these kind of lore almost pages that he has at the beginning. It says here, First, there were the Titans, the Elder Gods, the Ancient uh, Giants, the Black Winter, which we just met at the beginning of Thor of this run, the God Tempest, not sure about that one, the King in Black, which was, of course, a previous Donny Cates um, uh, event, and then, of course, the Phoenix from over in the X-Men books. The Dark, the Light, the Blood, the Fire, oh, and how they raged, uh, and born from the forge uh, of that rage annihilation but then as it always has the gr the grand cosmic wheel turned again ever churning ever grinding against the gilded mill of eternity and as the seeds of that titanic rage a billion years gone it began ever so slowly to blossom and the cycle goes on fire gods rage annihilation and then born from entropy eternity but in the world of gods and titans, as we all know, not even eternity can last forever. Recently, on the eve of the War of Realms, the mighty Thor, Jane Foster, faced down the unstoppable Mangog. She threw the great dark beast into the sun, where Molnir was, uh, where Molnir the Smasher was destroyed. But, uh, but before long, once again, the fury of the titans' fire reigned. Or from the, the fury of titans, the f fire reigned. And now, born from that fire, once more is rage. And now, I really want to dive into that a little bit because I like the way they set that up. The, the exposition speaks of this cycle, right? So we have fire, then gods, then rage, and then annihilation. I think that firmly sets us into, or the way this is set up with this page right here, uh, with Thor being the one that it lands on rage, I think it firmly lands us in you know the rage part of that cycle. We had the fire, which was the forging of uh, Mjolnir. Then we have the era of the gods, which I'm going to assume is kind of the era of Asgard where you have you know Bor uh, and then Odin and now Thor and now we are in this era of rage where we're coming to kind of the third part of that cycle leading us into the final part 
Annihilation. So I like how, one, they give us some exposition there on some previous Thor story arcs, which are going to be important uh, later on. And then we also kind of set up this almost thesis statement on what this story arc is going to be about. Fire, God's rage. Now we're in this rage part of the cycle, circling around to Annihilation, kind of this continual cycle um, of renewal. So I really like, right out of the gate, we know kind of exactly um, what we're going to expect from the, uh, what we should expect from these this story arc at least in broad strokes here so uh, Mjolnir has been stolen and Thor is going to uh, try and figure out who stole it. He goes to Sif because she is currently the keeper of the Bifrost and can see everything, but she can't see it. She says, I see nothing. Um, and then um, Thor gives us a, some big exposition dump on some, some more lore that we need to know about. He says, there is a book, a great tome of kings, its pages hidden from all but the rightful king of Asgard. Within its pages it tells of the past of my father and my grandfather before him, of the titans that formed this realm, and all the rest. And it also speaks of prophecy of things to come. I have been reading it for days. I have not eaten or slept. It speaks of a great storm, the likes of which we have never seen before, brought forth by Mjolnir, wielded by a being known as the God of Hammers. This book says uh, this being will kill the golden king of Asgard, and then, quote, and his soul will be trapped in the fire forever more whoo that is some pretty hefty stuff so we have this big prophecy from this long time book that only the kings of asgard can actually read that the god of hammers is coming forth not only to destroy everything but to kill the king the the golden king of asgard so just like we had a broad stroke setting up the the general um what we should expect in this now we have the more specific stakes of what's going on we you know we're in the cycle of fire gods rage annihilation but we also know what is bringing about that annihilation and that is the namesake of this story arc, the God of Hammers. So from there, we have a little bit more exposition here. Um, the one I'm not going to read this one, but I do like this. This is the Gauntlet, uh, otherwise or. Uh, also known as the Black Hand of God or the Pit. Uh, it very much reminds me of Nowhere from the Guardians of the Galaxy movie because I think this is part um, of, a, of a celestial that's been, like the hand has been cut off and then they built a big giant space station in it, which was exactly what we saw in um, Guardians of the Galaxy with them building that space station in the head of an old celestial. And I think right now the Avengers... Are living in the head of a dead celestial somewhere uh, on Earth. I'm not currently reading the Avengers book, um, so I, I, I think I've got that right. But please let me know into uh, let me know in the comments uh, down below. So this is just a big old gladiator ring, uh, similar to Thor Ragnarok. Uh, if we're referencing the MCU, and this is where Odin is passing his time fighting this big old troll guy, and of course Thor shows up. Uh, not going to get into a lot here. Thor is basically just there to to pick up Odin and we see Thor do Thor things and you know ulti you know utterly destroy this big bad guy here and then uh, Thor and Odin go to Nidavellir and this is important because um, of what Odin says right here Thor originally questions why they're there. He says, I do not know why you'd bring me to the dwarves. I'm not in need, of, in, in need of a new weapon forged. I need Mjolnir return before it falls into the wrong hands. And Thor, or Odin says, the dwarves of Nidavellir can track their creations across the stars. Across the stars. Each weapon they cast is imbued with a small part of their very souls. They bleed for their work, boy. And then as they... So that's very important. We, need to, we needed to know that they can be tracked and also that their parts of their very souls are imbued into the weapons that they create. So um, they kind of cross the, the or, uh, crest the hill there and the dwarves are dead. The forge is broken and they say here they were killed by a hammer by Mjolnir. So... The hammer, or someone wielding the hammer, has come there and destroyed the dwarves and the forge. Crazy, crazy stuff. So that brings us to the end of issue 19. Let's just roll right into um, issue 20 here. And um, we have a bunch of just really good exposition here. I love the way that he opens up these books. And basically, um, this is just, you know, that there's going to be death and, you know, 
you know, death and war across all of the, the ten or nine realms, um, you know, coming forward. And then we have this huge, amazing splash page, splash page here from Nick Klein with just the one word there, death. And you see all the graves there with the different um, dwarven uh, weapons marking those graves. And apparently this body he is carrying is uh, Itri, a forge master of Nidavellir, which, again, speaking of the MCU... That's the character that Peter Dinklage played in uh, in Infinity War. So um, I don't think I've ever read anything with uh, Itri before or Itiri before in it. But it sucks to see him die before I ever got the chance to to meet him uh, here in in the comics. So here we just have um, th I, I like really like the interaction between Thor and and Odin here. So um, Thor is basically kneeling before Itiri's uh, or Itri's dead body and. Odin says a king cannot rule from his knees, boy. And Thor says, "This one, uh, this one shall never do what the hell. This one shall do whatever the hell he pleases." As for you, loyal subject of Asgard, you may do uh, well to bite your tongue when you're addressing your king. And then Odin says, "Or what? You'll you'll go back and cry to your mother again, damn boy." And that's when, of course, um, Thor uh, beats the crap out of his father a little bit, and then both physically and verbally so you see him punching him here across the across the planet and then he breaks him down verbally he says um this is your fault do you not see that you blind old fool donald blake going insane a broken enchantment of yours that that saw how many die and now this mjolnir's worth uh, worthiness magics are gone magics you put in place which has let some god of hammers steal it and by the elder gods look around you father everything is is dying everything is broken everything you touch everything you have made has come apart damn taking him right down and odin says oh believe me i i can see what's going on but before we can dive any deeper into that conversation loki pulls both of them to jotunheim and just like Nidavellir, Jotunheim has been hit by the person or uh, entity that stole Mjolnir and has killed and slaughtered a bunch of frost giants there. Um, then we get an amazing uh, exposition dump here, basically telling us a little bit more about the prophecy of the God of Hammers. Uh, Loki says, uh, no matter what you claim to believe, this prophecy, this myth is real. I have scoured the universe to obtain what, the, uh, what records there are of this god. Sadly, whatever legends there were seem to have been destroyed and destroyed recently. But everything I found, they all tell the same story. The god of hammers will rise, he will ignite the ten realms, and he will take the last king of Asgard. And then, and then there will be nothing, nothing but the distant sound of a forge, burning, raging, as the God of Hammers reshapes the world. So there you go, we have our rage, we have our annihilation, and then following that cycle, back around to the fire of the God of Hammers reforging the world, almost very Phoenix-like, right? Um, uh, Odin here says that he will ignite the Ten Realms, so this will be another War of Realms. And then Loki says, no, you misunderstand me, the text is literal. They will not go to war, they will burn and before they can even get farther into that conversation Sif shows up grabs Thor and shows him another place that has been hit by um by the hammer and it is a Broxton in uh, Oklahoma here on Earth and that is where Asgard kind of was transported to for a little bit I have not read that uh that era of Thor, so I don't know the details around that, but I do know that Asgard was located in Broxton, Oklahoma for a little bit, and you can see him just weeping for the people that he called friends and family during that era, and it's just oh, it's so sad to see him um, taken down like that. And then he kind of turns on the jets here, and we get the hammer coming back to him. Kind of. It's kind of coming back to him, but it hits him right in the right in the gut. He's not catching it. It is attacking him. And um, the description here, the narration here says, And then there were no more words, only a symphony of Uru breaking against Godbone. There would be no more peace. There would be no more thunder. For lo, the hammer has spoken. And there it is. No one stole Mjolnir. Mjolnir got up and left of her own accord. I, I assume that's female. That's a female form. But yeah, 
Mjolnir is sentient, and for some reason, which we'll talk about here in issue 21, it got tired of Thor, and it, no one stole it. It just got up and left on its own, which is fascinating. We'll talk more about, get into more about my thoughts on that as we get, uh, as we, a after we get through issue 21. But let's go ahead and get to issue 21 here, because there is some damn, damn good stuff in here. So, this first bit almost seems like it's seeding another, um, another story arc. It says, there's only so much darkness one can throw into the sun before the star turns black. And for over four billion years, Earth's sun has burned the hearts of countless, uh, evils to to cinders and bones and atoms but along the way the light has been infected the well poisoned and now a new evil grows in the furnace of midgard slowly evolving of growing stronger every day waiting waiting for destiny to arrive but this story sorry uh is of this ancient and spreading uh ancient evil spreading reaching out from the flames of the untold destruction it will bring upon the universe the total and complete extinction it will herald that story is not ready to be told so definitely feels like that's seeding a future story arc um but there is only so much darkness one can throw into the sun into the star before the star turns black and what was forged in those flames will carry that darkness that evil well, until every star in the sky turns cold and you see the hammer just hit Thor and just plow him right through uh, a bunch of stuff there. And then we start to get some exposition and reasoning from the now the newly sentient or newly revealed to be sentient Mjolnir. Thor here says, who are you? What kind of trick is this? How are you doing this? And Mjolnir says, Thor, you wound me. You and I have been together for so long. Well, except for my brief dalliance with Jane, of course. I do hope you weren't too jealous of that. You of all people should know that sowing one, one's wild oat, wild oat, let's call it a phase. And then she continues on here, uh, and she says, Honestly, what's with all this? That's what all this comes down to now, you know. Speeches, titles, crowned, th uh, thrones, parliaments, and send meanings, blah, blah, blah. I'm afraid I've just grown so Board of it, which is very key to what we um, also uh, get over here in the next uh, one of the next pages. But before we get there, damn, look at that. Mjolnir blocked Thor's punch with the hammer and just blew his damn arm out. Goodness. Um, and then uh, she says, the hammer says here, uh, broken? I know. I know more than anyone how this must feel. I have been there at your side, in your hand, every single time you've beaten back another gathering storm of death. I have watched for eons. I know all of your deeds, even those you have forgotten. All your triumphs, all your secrets, your weaknesses. And yes, yes, Thor, you can be broken. You just have to learn how Ooh, damn. Now, before she can deliver the killing blow, Odin shows up, which is really, really damn cool. I dig that. And then um, Sif shows up as well to Bifrost Mjolnir away to what they call, you know, a place so far away that there's no, there's no way of calculating the distance. Thor here asks a question I think we're all asking. What happened? Uh, what's happening? It said the God of Hammers. It said that it was Mjolnir brought to life. And Odin says, Mjolnir has always been alive, boy. I trapped the Mother Storm inside of it eons ago. And when the dwarves forged that cursed rock into Mjolnir, they uh, told me they, those who died making it, that their voices, their souls, live on in the hammer itself. I never believed it, but whatever this is, whatever has taken hold of that damned mallet, has also come back. So not only did he trap what he calls the mother of the storm in there, but we have the spirits of uh, some dead dwarves in there. So we saw in issue uh, 19 of this story arc, or issue 1 of this story or issue 19, the first issue in this story arc, that Odin said dwarves put the little bit of themselves, like their literal souls, into some of these weapons that they create. And here we actually see that some of them died forging this weapon. So not only is there a little bit of them in there, there's a lot of it in there of them in there, plus the um the uh the mother of the storm as well. So uh next page right here, we actually see the hammer come back and break Odin's back. Over here on this next page he says, my legs, you know, kind of meaning 
I can't feel my legs. He got his spine blown out by this thing. So Thor asks, why are you doing this? And we get her big villain speech here. She says, you, you take me for granted. You always have, but none of you have ever understood me. You thought my enchantment meant uh, you must be a worthy warrior to be noble, to be true of heart. But ask yourself, Thor, does any of that describe you? No. No, I am a hammer. To be worthy of me is to break, to smash, to destroy. And with you, with your throne and your crown and your speeches, well, this isn't the first time I've grown tired of you, is it? Yes, Jane threw me into the sun and you left me broken. You left me to burn. But uh, you see, I wasn't alone in the sun. There was something else there, something powerful, and we burned together. And we find out that Mjolnir has been merged with the Rage of Mangog, which was, of course, the villain that um, Jane threw into the sun back in, I think it was Jason Aaron's Mighty Thor. So there we go. That brings us to the end of the first three parts of um, God of Hammer. So um, I'm really enjoying a lot of this. There are a few things that I don't love about it, but we'll get into that. So first off, I love the idea that Mjolnir has some sort of sentience and actually a temperament that it has, you know, some form of a feeling that we see here. It definitely reminds me of is either the second or third third story arc in um, Joss Whedon's Astonishing X-Men where the danger room actually came to life because it gained sentience and it knew how to defeat the X-Men because it was the danger room and fought them and I really remind this story arc reminds me of that so I like that um, I like that idea also I like the idea of reframing what the hammer defines as what it means to be worthy um, that you know it's like look just because worthy doesn't mean pure of heart it doesn't mean noble i'm a hammer you are worthy worthiness to me means being able to swing that damn hammer and do some damage with it so i really really like that idea now obviously that's a probably a temporary reframing of what it means to be worthy and it's probably influenced by or maybe influenced by uh, the presence of mangog not quite sure about that that's you know just kind of a, a supposition at this point we'll end up seeing where this ends up at the end of this story arc we do have two issues left who knows what can happen there but i do like that idea that one is sentient and two we're reframing what the hammer defines as being worthy um, I didn't uh, talk about a lot of it as we were going through, but also the interactions with the characters. The one that I did talk about, the um, Thor both assaulting his dad physically and verbally was fantastic. And there's some interactions with Sif that were also really, really good in issue 19 that I didn't go through, but those were great. And then the exposition, just those ways that um, Donny Cates opens up the issues are fantastic. And of course, Nick Klein's artwork is not to be missed. It's absolutely fantastic. The dislike likes though um universe ending stakes again not only in this with threatening to literally burn out the 10 realms but also setting up the, whatever that growing darkness is within earth sun it feels like it's like just super high stakes over and over and over again and i have heard that criticism of donny cates from other people um i didn't see it myself because this is the first work from donny cates that i've ever read i haven't read any of his venom anything else that he's done just these 21 so far issues of of thor but I'm already starting to see it, and I can kind of see what other people mean when they talk about he does the same, he's a little bit of a one-trick pony. Not that he's bad, but he does that, kind of has that one universe-ending stakes thing, and I can kind of start to see that, um, and I'll keep an eye out for that as we read more um, more Donny Cates Thor. Also, I kind of wish that Molnir was just acting on its own, not merged with Ma with Mangog. It would have made, I think, for a more interesting story. Um, this the essence or spirit of Mjolnir being merged with the Mangog or the rage of Mangog. Um, I can understand it because it gives um, Donny Cates an out to kind of write himself out of a corner. You know, what if we end this? Like, how are you going to reconcile giving 
Mjolnir back to Thor? How are you going to put the genie back in the <laughs> back in the hammer in this once it's all done? A quick and easy explanation is to separate the essence of uh, Mjolnir from the rage of of Mangog, and that kind of backs everything up to um, kind of reset uh, Mjolnir back to when uh, the hammers was with Jane, where we saw her in the flashback here throwing it into. Um, into the sun with with Mangog there. So I'm also very unfamiliar with Mangog. I don't know really anything about that character or that villain. So there might be some implications there that if you're more familiar with the character, you might pick up on here. I'm missing out on that. That's that's entirely on me because I'm not terribly familiar with that uh, with that particular character set. So a um, lot of stuff to to like in this. Couple things that I don't like at the moment, as of this recording. I could read the next two issues and both of those concerns could be swept away and I'm, you know, sunshine and rainbows again when it comes to uh, when it comes to this story arc. So guys, what do you think of God of Hammers thus far of the first 60%, the first three issues of this five issue story arc? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below. Guys, if you happened to enjoy this video, I hope you did. We're going on 25 minutes now. Be sure to hit that like button before you click away. Also, subscribe to the the channel if you are not already i would very much appreciate it guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your time until we talk again speak life and we'll see you at the comic shop